Greetings everyone, Darth Oblivious back with you for another episode of Wretched Hive Recap. Much long overdue, but here we are finally again. Another, uh, a fantastic episode. Where are we going to discuss this episode? Just a couple of little tidbits to go through from uh, a few weeks ago from the forms that uh, sort of caught my fancy and of course we have the april a producer live stream to discuss so first things first let's get uh, the uh, forum uh, that should have posts out of the way that we sort of want to discuss and then we'll go ahead uh go through the producer live stream as we have the last couple of episodes here it seems to be working very well now this uh, method this form and then it will, will be done. We'll call out a quickie dicky episode there. So let's get on with it without further ado, because there is actually a lot to go through, at least through the producer live stream anyway. So here we are. Let's share this so we can see what we're going to discuss. First thing is the game has died. There's nowhere to go. Subscribers, check your cartel coin letters. By the way, I may be ripping you off. Of course, you guys seriously can't do anything right anymore. So we'll start with this one because this is be a fairly quick one here. Right? Actually, you know what? Let's start with this one. Check your cartel coin ledgers by where it may be ripping you off. So at this point in time, we already know there was something funky going on with the monthly subscriber grants. Now this monthly subscriber grant, excuse me, um, came about after the move to free to play. So as one of the perks for remaining a subscriber uh, through that period, and of course remaining a subscriber now throughout uh, whatever time is that you get this monthly allotment of cartel coins uh, along with, you know, everything you get as a subscriber so a, a sort of a little bonus here we'll say so of 500 cartel coins a month and it's supposed to be within every 30 day period so every 30 days as long as you maintain an active subscription you get this bonus 500 cartel coins well some enterprising subscribers here have noticed that uh, for a little while at least uh, something funky has been going on with the system. So we have Demir here, who uh, points this out nicely that uh, in August he got the coins as uh, normal on the day that he should have got them. And then what he noticed for his September grant, uh, the coins actually came three days um, later. Supposed to come like around obviously on 9 2, got them on 9 5. And then what he noticed is that in oh, this October, excuse me, of course, again, they were supposed to arrive on October 2nd, instead, he got them on October 8th. So this time, they his grant arrived six days after it was supposed to arrive, and as we can see, it just kept compounding here the days that he was supposed to get the grant here the days he actually got the grant so in November it was actually nine days later that it was supposed to be December 12 days and of course January is over at this point two weeks and here we come to the end of March where the grant was literally three weeks late supposed to arrive February 29th instead he got it on March 21st so, now, of course, throughout this thread, you've got the resident uh, blinders on for some of these people. Say, oh, it's no big deal, this and that. And essentially, you know, they do have a point to where, hey, this is just a free perk. It doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. And, and we'll, we'll call it the principle of the matter. And a lot of stuff comes down to principles. I mean, a lot of stuff that happens, a lot of stuff that people do is a matter of principle. So having a matter of principle is very important. So hence we have this little thread here. So 
to say it's no big deal, yeah, in one point you are correct. It really isn't that big of a deal. It's just a, a we'll go quote unquote free perk that comes along with a subscription. But nevertheless, it's it's one of those things that we'll say again is a good faith effort on the company to follow through on what you uh, promise, on what you state um, you will deliver to your customer base. You are doing business here. So yes, it is very important from that aspect that we are dealing with a business and in order for the business to succeed, the business has to follow through on what the business promises to deliver to the customer. So, again, um, from a business standpoint, from a principal standpoint, this is very important. And I'm glad that uh, we've got some very well aware um, subscribers here who actually pointed this out. So Bioware did end up uh, responding to this, Eric must go, so we'll go to the first Bioware post. So he does explain what happened here. Hey folks, I wanted to pop into the story and address your concerns with the three-day delay on Cartel Coin Grant. Since August of last year, so that's when it actually started, as we saw from Demir's first post, an issue creeped into our granting system which caused cartel coins to be granted every 33 days instead of every 30 days as intended. As you pointed out, if this issue went on for a long period of time, your monthly grant could be affected, so we definitely did not want that to happen. As of right now, the only effect is that your grant may be delayed. With that in mind, we have a fix for this issue planned for with next week's maintenance. After next week, your grant should continue forward 30 days apart as intended. Thank you for raising this issue, so we should get it addressed. Okay. So by this time now, this should have been addressed. I haven't heard too much more from it. But the reason I, I wanted to point this thread out, again, aside from being something uh, of a matter of principle and, and, and good faith effort on the part of a company with its customer base, is the fact here is that thank you for raising this issue so we could get it addressed now at this point this is the end of march so essentially this has been going on for for you know a good at this point three six you know nine months here almost so getting very close to the point to where you would actually miss an entire month of grant again no no real loss out of pocket loss, but again, it's the principle of the matter. And the thing that 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 makes me want to bring this thread up, and 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 makes me think about this issue is that would this have ever have gotten fixed if nobody pointed it out? Uh, so you know, an issue that's been going on for nine months, not one mention of it from Bioware. Now, if Bioware was aware of this issue, which, um, this, this is a key phrase here. Thank you for raising this issue so we could get it addressed. So you could read this in, into one of two ways. That one, either Bioware was unaware of the issue until the player base started making a stink about it, which is a problem in and of itself, or two, they were aware of the issue and had absolutely no plans to address it until the, the player base started making us think about it, which is also a problem in and of itself. So let, let, let's think about that. So first of all, if they were unaware of it and nobody raised us think about it, this would have gone on and on until, until the cartel coin grants would have been so screwed up that people, you know, when would we be getting it? We'd, we'd be months and months behind. And, and, and it points to the fact that they, they were possibly unaware of it. In fact, that there was no absolutely no mention of it until now. This is the first yellow post to actually address this issue. So, if they were unaware of it, thank God we had some people actually paying attention to this and actually caring enough about the principle of the matter to mention it. Otherwise, at some point, you know, when would we be getting these grants? You might, they might stop the grants altogether and 
Now, hey, no big deal. We were going to get to 500. Yeah, it, it is a big deal when you think about the business aspect of it and the principle of the matter of it. So it's very troubling that something like this has gone unaddressed for this long of a period. Um, with, 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 you know, it's like how how as a developer are you not aware of something like this and and if you are aware of it you're just going to let it go I mean seriously thank God people were raising a stink about it again it's, uh, the principle of the matter this is what you probably said every 30 days and it should be every 30 days you get this it's part of a perk of paying $15 a month you're paying $15 a month for these cartel coins essentially so, you know, it's part of the perk, it's being a subscriber. If you're not getting this perk, it makes paying it $15 a month a little less necessary. A little less, why am I, you know, why am I doing it? You know, you're, again, giving the best part of the game away for free. So you would better offer a little something to entice people to uh, subscribe. That's a little bit more substantive, and uh, other than an hour's worth of pretty poor story content a month. So th th that that this is this is really troubling to me that you know something like this could have gone on for so long. And one, either the developers were completely unaware that there was a botch in their system, which again it wouldn't be really surprising with as many bugs and problems and stuff that uh, have faced this game. Um, in the last year or so and stuff like that again with, with testing all that now this of course is something that can't be tested but still you don't have some sort of system in place to make sure that something like this uh, doesn't get screwed up or doesn't have get bugs in it somehow something like this so you don't have a way to monitor to make sure this is actually working correctly it relies on somebody actually paying attention to their cartel coin ledger and saying oh wait a minute here because honestly I never paid much attention to my cartel coin ledger there was very little that I've actually spent cartel coins on to begin with I, I don't buy the packs you know every once in a while I would buy armor and stuff like that uh, that I kind of like for some of my characters stuff like that and of course buy buy collections unlocks but but overall I never really paid attention to the cartel coin grant because I never really felt compelled to spend that much in cartel coins being a subscriber you know it was pretty much what um, ever I got through gameplay was pretty much good enough for me that's sort of how I, I like to gather and collect stuff is collecting that stuff we get in game and that's one of the reasons why I'm extremely disappointed with some of the changes in the game that removed a lot of the collectible type armor you know sort of the, the, the flashpoint specific armor and that kind of stuff very disappointing very puzzling why they would do that but again with, with this this very troubling that either one they knew about it and weren't going to do anything about it until the player base brought the stink or two they didn't know anything about it and it was only up until this point before things sort of got out of hand that they finally decided to address it because absolutely no mention was made of this right until this post so until this post really got some steam going stuff like that quite possible that there would have been no fix whatsoever for this so very very troubling e either either scenario here uh, very troubling in in this regard so what's next how about this you guys sure she can't use to anything right anymore Ceragon topic title abundantly clear by the eternal championship PTS fiascos cartel hack revamps three times or pretty much everything else you guys have done in the last few months uh, I would venture to say even before that even longer than that but my sub training has been trying to long since day one I've been through it all it's month for the first time in five plus years not being this is an egotistical way whatever but that's sort of how it comes across 
Do you worship or think it's a big deal? Long time, yada yada yada. Star Wars no long enough. Give me yada yada yada. You do better. One point yada yada yada. Break it. If I when I just meant to be yada yada yada. So yada yada yada. So why do I bring this up? Well, uh, again, I think this points to here we have another long time sub player that is quite tired of. You know the how this game eventually is being handled. We've discussed this in previous episodes. Um, that some other of our good forum posters here that we've mentioned in the past have brought up, and that's the concept of at least having a perception of knowing what you're doing. And as as some of these forum posters brought up that we've mentioned in some of these recaps in the past is that the way that things are occurring that we can uh, uh, it's very obvious to the player base that the way that things have been handled and stuff like that just makes it seem that that it, it's it's I don't want to say it's other chaos because that just seems a little bit too much but I'll use that as a hyperbolic example but it seems like there's just other chaos in the development studio and that they they have absolutely no clue what the heck they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis now of course that's hyperbolic i don't really believe that but that's sort of the perception that's coming across that essentially one hand don't know what the other hand's doing back here and again this cartel coin grant that we've just mentioned this issue here points to that that there's essentially no real good oversight or control with what's going on or or how the studio's handling its design paradigms here so that that's really what what this post brings up to light here so here we go it's like the things that have been going on that that just give the appearance of that bioware really doesn't know what it's doing i mean i'm sure quite sure that a lot of people there actually do know what they're doing and things are rolling along nicely for the most part but still it's the appearance that that comes across and so you know the appearance of here we go another long time person leaving the game something's wrong here at some point you've got to realize that something that the directions here are not quite you know kosher not really good here for the overall health and longevity of the game and that, that's what we're really talking about here longevity we do not want this to be a turn style game uh, i mean we don't want this to turn into a game where the the, the business paradigm is, is mirrors or mimics the mobile market you know and unfortunately that seems to be where the direction this game is going it, it's basically a throwaway app at this point and that's not good for the longevity of it so that's not good for the overall health of the game and the player base <sighs> here we go it's something funny i encourage him to leave and when the game is devoid it says i can safely say i helped Murder again. That's very good. No, no, what we want to do is encourage people to play and pay for the game if they enjoy it, which has always been my SOP. It has always been what I've said through the past, through the years, is that I will continue to pay for the game as long as it offers the enjoyment I want to get out of it. Now, of course, there, with 4.0, there have been a lot of changes that uh, to the base core of the game, which is why I keep bringing them up, keep harping on them, um, because it has seriously negatively affected my enjoyment of the game. So, do their job rights for Star Wars? I don't think there are enough people left around to do that anymore. Yes, for one, yeah. We don't know the size of, of the development team at this point we do know that uh, there was some direction prior to Cockfee, um you know with the cancellation of one of the projects they were working on that got some help diverted to Cockfee. presumably or to, to swoot to or presumably to get Cockfee under the way but 
um, still, you know, what we've ended up with isn't really, you know, high quality stuff, I would say. Um, still, the best part of the game is the 1 through 50 leveling experience. It, it's just, you, you can't get past the fact that the best part of the game is free. Um, and so, of course, they have to do something in order to push you into paying for all the other stuff. Hence why they're rushing you through the best part of the game with the enhanced XP and the level sync. Uh, they basically destroyed and gutted what made the best part of the game the best part of the game in order to get people past that so they could hopefully uh, pay for the extra stuff that really is subpar by a long shot to, to the core of the game of what made this game great. So, Brian, on the off chance here, you can't really expect anyone else to believe you regard your fellow players as anything close to family. We're all nothing more to each other than the chat box. Hey, he is correct about that. But still, those letters in the chat box, they help create part of the experience. We want to make sure people are here and playing the game. So, what we're all doing here discussing, again, one of the reasons why we have Wretched Hive Recap is to highlight the issues that are going to affect the longevity and the health of this game. We want it to succeed, which is why we're all here talking about it. We want it to succeed. So, and the only way it's going to succeed is by letting the people who are creating it know what they need to do in order for us to remain here and remain paying what we want to pay in order to support the last game. So is there anything else there? I thought there might have been one or two things I wanted to point out here. Again, a lot of people here, it's just, again, again uh, Andrea's back. Yeah, she, she does make a couple of good points here, so let's go through this. Server crashes, there were not more or less server crashes in other expansion. Probably when they do crash, generally crush a player. Again, you know, common sense stuff uh, is, you know, buff nerf is classic by where I would say that that's classic anybody MMO. Uh, suck it up and move on. You know, that, that's standard MMO stuff. Broken events are also classic by where I would say that's sort of classic MMO stuff as well. Uh, there's always bugs. I mean, and not, you know, in the, in the realm of bugs, there's always bugs, every game now. You know, is it ideal? Is it right? Not necessarily, but it's something that we're at the point to where what we demand from our games requires such a high technological standard and requires such a deep uh, back end and coding scheme that you cannot escape the bugs no matter how much you test but then again it gets back to what we've said before is that you at least have to you know your your game is going to have bugs it's going to have broken content but at least make the good faith effort that you're doing everything that you possibly can to minimize those issues and up to this point, you know, Bioware has not really done that. They are starting to show that good faith effort by throwing more stuff on the PTS and delaying things like the Eternal Championship, which is good. Now, that was mentioned, is that we've mentioned this before, that the delay of the Etern Eternal Championship, while not really ideal since we are in such a content drought at this point, despite the, the hour, two hour long, you know, subpar stories that we are getting a month, but at least they are showing they can make the right decisions in terms of some of this content and testing stuff so at least they're show brought uh, bioware is finally showing progress into understanding what they need to do in order to make those good faith efforts to eliminate these issues bugs going on months and months is yeah again standard fare terrible ticket time yeah well frivolous tickets obviously just you know that's part of the player base is to blame for that but again you know a lot of a lot of that onus is on ea and 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 their their subpar standards for customer service 
you see being delayed is new content, which is what we mentioned. They are not happy with the state of it, and that's a good thing. Not a good thing that they're not happy with the state of it. So, you know, it's sort of, a, I guess you could say it's one of those EverQuest Next things to where, surprise, surprise, EverQuest Next is dead in the water because, quite frankly, it sucked. Here, again, EC, you know, they're developing it. They realize, you know what, this really sucks. We need to work on it. So that's a good thing, at least. It's not the luxury you could try to put some objectivity. Very good, very good. If you want to go after them, pick about on how badly they communicate. Yes, that is still somewhat of an issue. I think, personally, that they've actually gotten a little bit better. But it's still, I think, one of the big issues about this game. Because there are still many things that they have not addressed that is sort of one of those burning embers underneath the player base. And I think this is why we see a lot of these things that, sort of like the cartel coin grant, that, that sort of catch fire and really, really explode more than they really have to, is because we have a lot of burning embers here that have remained unaddressed for so long a period, it's just simmering. And all we need is one little excuse to really just, you know what, enough is enough. It, it's again, constantly, the straw that broke the camel's back, one thing after another. Um, and it's all because of these burning embers that remain unaddressed because of the way Bioware fails to communicate properly with the player base. Uh, again, yes, yeah, you know, post better. Um, one of the other things I wanted to mention here is, you know, you know, 15 minutes of fame, but I, I would have to disagree up to a point. Yeah, there, there's a lot of these good buy posts that are completely useless, completely unnecessary. Um, they're basically just egotistical type things. Um, but I personally think there is a place for posts of this nature if they are done correctly and that and if they are done with some critical um, critical criticism proper critical criticism in mind here excuse me for a minute <coughs> Whew, still a bit under the weather but we're recovering and and that's the key um, I personally have made some of these posts in the past. Uh, you know, I, I've made it, for example, for Guild Wars, for Guild Wars 2, back in the day, I, I made a post detailing saying, hey, I'm, I have no intention of playing Guild Wars 2, and here's why. And I listed the reason to say, it just, this is, essentially, which boils down, this is not quite the Guild Wars game I want to play. I mean, if you want me to play. Guild Wars 2, this is what I'm looking for out of the game. If you add this, then I'd be more than happy to play the game. So I think posts like this do have um, some value to contribute if done correctly. Because essentially, you know, the, the, the exit interview that you get when you cancel a sub is very limiting in terms of what you can put down. You know, there's a character limit. So you can only put down so much on saying, this is why I'm canceling my sub. So I think the forums are a very valuable outlet to really detail some of the issues someone has with the game and saying, you know what? You know, I've loved this game, I've supported it for, for this X amount of long, but I just no longer can support it because these reasons, because this is what bothers me. This is what not makes it fun anymore. And hence why, we're, again, why we're doing this type of thing, why we're doing Wretched Hive Recap, why you know people are doing all sorts of other type things to discuss the game and its problems, is that, you know, we want the game to succeed. We want to go in and play the game and, and enjoy playing the game. But until certain things happen, it, it simply makes no sense to be able to go in there to play the game or, or to pay a monthly sub or to, to support it through the cartel market. So, you know, to have, say, a good buy poster is just simply egotistical, they're not needed. Yeah, I, I think they are needed in some aspect. Again, if they're done correctly, to be told, hey, you know what, this game was fun, it's not fun for me anymore, this is exactly why. Now, nothing may come of, may come of it because, you know, 
what somebody personally may want may not no longer be feasible to do for the game, but at least it's out there. At least Bioware can look at it and say, you know what, we need to keep an eye on this or something like this. You know, At least they are more aware of it than they would be otherwise, and that only helps improve the game. So I would say to everyone out there, don't immediately dismiss these goodbye posts because they can have a very positive effect in the long term, again, if they are done correctly. So I would say let's keep them coming, but let's encourage people to do them correctly. Um, this particular one, not so much, because there's really nothing that is like, oh, you know, you guys just screwed up. Well, how? List how they've screwed up. List what has gone on in the game to, to explain why you're at the point you're at, and, and explain so like, and give ideas. To say, hey, here's some ideas that would keep me around. This is what I feel needs to be done. So, it, it, it and these ideas, of course, they should be personal. You know, they're going to be personal. But let's at least get them out there so they can be discussed and their merits can be discussed. And that's a good thing to be able to discuss stuff like that. So that's why I'll always harp on the, this enhanced XP thing and, and this level thing, sync thing, and say, yes, they should be. I mean, to me, they should be optional within reason, as I've discussed many times on the forums and here on Rich and Hive Recap. Because it, it, right now the system is very limiting. Um, it pushes you, it, 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 it's a detriment to the best part of the game, and, and I personally feel that, you know, if you want people to stay, if you want people to pay, you know, you want them to enjoy the meat of your game. 1 through 50 is the best part of the game. Let's keep people there. Let's let them decide how fast they want to get through that part of the game. Let the people decide. Let them so thoroughly enjoy what you've made that has kept this game here for five years. And, and doing that will allow people to stay and will allow people to actually pay more through the game because they're so thoroughly enjoying that experience. Don't rush them through it. Don't funnel people down to one play style. Don't funnel people down into one way to to go through this game because, you know, a certain core group of people just want to rush through it because they're doing their own thing. Not everybody enjoys that. So you know, there, there are a great many people who enjoy uh, you know, leveling at their own pace and stuff like that. So, you know, you've, it, it's something that can be optional. It works brilliantly for many, many other games as an optional method. So, so it's no reason why it shouldn't be optional here, except, of course, we've already said why at this point it's not going to be optional. Why it isn't optional is because they want people to rush through the best part of the game that they're giving away for free because they want to force people into paying for additional stuff. And that, of course, that's the EA SOP. Um, that, that's the EA influence there um, doing that. Uh, so I don't think Bioware is completely at fault, but absolutely no reason why you should rush people through your best part of the game because ultimately you're going to make more money if they're playing the game at their own pace and enjoying it. So that's that. So this last one here, game has died. Nowhere to go. So let's actually start with the first post here. This has been going on for quite some time, so we'll do that. We'll do that there. First a post here by Mad Bad. I've played on Hobbinger for two years now. I was forced to server transfer off of part five PvP server because it became a ghost town. 30 minute queue times during peak time, after peak times mornings, late evenings, no queue pops at all. All the time I had a choice, go to a public search all the time. So basically talking about PvP queue pops, stuff like that. So very little surprise that, you know, he feels that the game has died. There's nowhere to go because at this point, PvP has been utterly gutted and, and left for dead in this game. So, uh, where are we going here? Maximum. Unfortunately for this game, what you said is the majority, not the minority. So, again, you know, this thing that a lot of people are, you know, just just you know, they're leaving the game to, to go play other stuff. 
just because a lot of this stuff has been left untouched here in the game and again it all gets back to the matrix and how you know the self-fulfilling prophecies um, of you know p of not being able to understand what's behind those metrics is saying you know hey nobody's playing PvP so we're not really going to focus on PvP well why is nobody playing PvP well it's because you haven't done anything for PvP so you're essentially you're essentially skewing your own metrics because of of what you know what you failed to do from a standpoint of what you know should have been done all along is that you know you've got all these various elements of the game each one must be worked on equally now again you don't need to necessarily do that every expansion although some games have been able to do that some developers have been able to do that but you know you can have one expansion that that focuses on you know say interior design but you also have to make sure some of the all the other elements get a little bit of of affection and love in that expansion sure have one expansion focus on something core but you always got to make sure that you're showing constant progress with all the other elements of the game and that's the problem up to this point we really haven't seen that and so hence of course that that's why the metrics are going to show what they're going to show is because well nobody's playing operations because all the operations are so old some of them are still buggy and broken so why is anyone going to play with them so if you look at them it's just, nobody's playing operations so we don't really need to focus on operations well okay the metrics are showing you nobody's playing operations but why it's because you haven't done anything with them do something with them and the metrics will show people love to play operations but, you know, again, you can only say so much. So, you know, again, just show, you know, again, this post just should highlight some of the things like we're just talking about here. It's like, okay, you know, there's some inherent problems with the design paradigms here that doesn't seem by where it seems to get. And again, that gets back to show to to the fact that you know what are you really presenting to your player base? You know how are you, you you coming across to your player base here? Back then we web page it's all things that lowly advertising board problem. Okay. So anything else interesting here? But again, you know it's you you you've got to be able to oh, okay let's just talk about ad stuff here <laughs> hello kitty online <laughs> yeah 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 Okay, so nothing really else more to discuss there. So again, you know, it just gets back to some of the some of the core things that we've been saying all along here. It's that, you know we want the game to succeed. You know, um, we need to discuss these things. We need to hopefully get through to I were here and make them think about this stuff that they I mean at least again it gives the appearance that they haven't really thought about you know this kind of stuff that it just it just seems beyond their grasp unless somebody mentions it but anyway that's what we wanted to discuss anyway from the wretched hive so without further ado without more of wasting time let's get on with talking about let's let's get through this uh producers live stream from April. Let's see what they've had to discuss. Let's break it down. Let's see what's the good, what's the bad. Here we go. Thank you very much. April producer live stream. Hi everyone. Welcome Hello. back again. One more stream. Uh, my name is Eric Musco. I'm the community manager and I'm joined by... I'm Ben Irving, the producer of Star Wars The Old Republic. I'm Charles Boyd, the creative lead for Star Wars The Old Republic. That's right. We decided to do, which by the way, 
Charles and I were laughing at the way our names. It's Charles Ben Musco. We're actually <laughs> one person. You can't see we're conjoined at the hip. You just can't see it. It's a pretty Star Warsy name. It is. I felt I, we felt that it's a lot. Uh, so for anyone who's the first time tuning into a producer live stream, the goal is to do around thirty minutes. Yep. Um, it'll kind of be a status of the game right now. We'll talk about some issues in the community. Um, we'll talk about what just came out today. What's yeah, we'll see about those month. issues in and, the community uh, now, won't we? Yep. Shall we get started? Let's get right, started. All right, Ben, I'm going to let you click and drive this bad Ooh, boy through. Oh, can't wait. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Musco kind of covered this. Agenda for the day, talk through State of the Galaxy, a couple hot topics from the community through forums, you know, and uh, the rest of the interwebs. Uh, we'll do a recap of the launch of Chapter 12, Visions in the Dark. Um, give you guys an update on subscriber rewards for next month. Um, we're going to get into the Eternal Championship and PTS, as well as announce the launch date for Eternal Championship, which is really exciting. Um, Charles will talk us through Profit and Plunder, which is our Chapter 13, give you a sneak peek into that. And then we'll uh, do the wrap-up. Quite actually, frankly, I think um, a short cinematic if they're going the to do story stuff, stuff during the producer live stream, they should make it 45 minutes. Which is really cool. And no I mean, spoilers. This is so why they have, have producer yet. vlogs. So, I mean, this is why we have producer vlogs, or, or the story vlogs, to tell about the story. So let's just stick to the mechanics and the design and that kind of stuff here. We don't need story for the producer live stream. It's kind of the whole reason why we do this. Right. We had a bunch of problems, and the detail will just bore you, but yep. um, things that weren't working, access to the wrong things, etc. It's now up there. People have been playing it, and we're going to dive into that later on. Yep. So in-game chat and mail, one of the things that we've seen come up quite a bit on social media and the forums and Reddit is some of the spam that unfortunately happens when you're in-game, whether someone sends it to you through your mail or they're doing it in chat. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about just a, rem a couple of reminders to you guys. First off, we have a bunch of automated systems in place to try to catch that stuff to avoid it from happening at all. Obviously, it can't catch everything. So the real thing that I want to say is if you guys are seeing that stuff, report it. If you see it in the mail, there's a report button at the top. If you see it in chat, right-click on the person and report that person. That helps us tremendously. So you guys are really our best weapon in combating a lot of that stuff by just helping us report those issues as you see them crop up. So we know that it exists and it's a pain, and we do everything we can to try to get rid of it without you ever seeing it. But some of it slips through, so just stay on top of reporting it, and it'll help us out a lot. Help us help you <laughs> is, what I'm, is what I'm saying um, just I mean we're going to get into we can help you do a lot Obviously, if you just listen today more to the, the community I communicate. And normally the stream is two days from now right so we've had time to see how everything's been going right uh, but so far this launch has been really great I mean we have a couple of small things we're going to address uh, probably on Thursday morning um, but so far especially the chapter itself has been going really great so um, we're excited that it's launched, that you guys get access to it, but I think we're going to talk about that a little more on the next slide. Yep. All right. So I guess, Charles, you there can we are. Yeah. Take it away. Yeah, just uh, super excited that this chapter is out there for our early access uh, subscribers. You know, it'll be available to everyone on Thursday. Uh, like Ben said, just really pleased to see the feedback and excited to hear what everyone thinks about it. Uh, it's a really cool, kind of very, you know, mystical kind of chapter. It's all about the force, it's all about experience. That we've seen a lot so far is that. As you mentioned, like it's a force. We really, we really try hard to balance it. And remember, if you haven't played it yet, rush home tonight to play the best chapter so far, <laughs> according to the forums. That's what the forums. Yeah. Are. Okay. Murder some face. So that brings up a question because um, I think you know where that species has kind of progressed over this. Yeah, yeah. things to show you about set. So sure. you know they have a lighter armor and this is more heavy armor focus. Yeah. And so one of the things that we wanted to point out, it's one of the it's one of the things Ben especially really wanted to start focusing and getting incorporating into the stream is talking about some of the really awesome stuff that community members yep, do. Absolutely. Um, and one of the things that's cool I especially with that. Intel market packs is if you're ever curious what is in the pack, what some of the armor sets and stuff look like, um, Tor Fashion and obviously Dolphy are both great resources to actually find out a lot of what those appearances look like and stuff for the pack. So just a shout out to those guys because they both do good work in, in showing some of the things. Indeed, that I and approve. And just generally yes. to encourage all that stuff. You know, I was watching a video today um, and it's actually by someone who we're going to show one of their videos later, so I won't spoil that. Sure. Um, but in this other video I watched from this, it's like, I know that this person will never watch this video, blah, blah, blah. We watch the videos. You know, people are being called out by name, but we watch all of this stuff. And, 
and we think it's a really valuable resource to the community at large. Yep. So if you guys are out there making it, please continue to do so. Absolutely. Oh, I just saw someone. And I, I shall. It's got white white dye on it. I bet that's pretty cool. That must look yeah. pretty awesome. Can they can they link us a screenshot? Can we check it out somehow? Uh, they might not be able to send a link into there, but I will say tweet at us with a link to that, so we could take a look at it. Maybe we'll retweet it and yeah, share it a cool. bit. Yeah. yeah. So that brings us to the Great Mount debate. The Great debate. <laughs> So do you want to explain the mount debate that's going on? Yeah, so I believe that the new Marsh Hunter Ackley mount is the coolest mount we've seen in the cartel market for a while. Now, Charles and Moscow both disagree with me, and they think Episode that the Nexu mount from the previous pack, the Disavowed pack, is the coolest mount we've had in a long time. Correct. Now, obviously they're wrong, and, and there's no way to really argue that but we thought we could ask you guys to help us settle this bet correct so there's two things that we want you guys to do so at the top in the middle you notice there's a straw poll um, go to that straw poll and you can vote on whether you think the nexu or the accolade is cooler second in chat type the words either accolade or nexu depending on which one you think is cooler what we're going to do is, one, the poll will decide which one's cooler, which obviously is important for, <laughs> it's gonna, for very it's gonna sci- some serious violence yeah, here in the studio. For scientific reasons. And two, we are then going to do, we're then going to, and this is all on Tate, so you guys can thank Tate for this. Tate is then going to work with someone who has chosen the correct best answer, and we're going to give you <laughs> Which that, is the next two. Which will you be the next two, obviously. <laughs> we will then give you that mount on uh, the character of your choosing in-game. So, so you want to type into chat to win one of the mounts. Correct. You either want to type next to or Accolade and then also go to the straw poll just so we know for science which one is the coolest. Um, and then Tate will get all that together and uh, and we'll, well, if we remember, we'll announce that later on who won yeah. or if I forget, I'll do it on the forums yeah. later, but we will get you the winning I mount. Think in the wrap-up, Surprise. we should have worked it out. Of course. Hopefully chat can remind us in the wrap-up yeah. that we have to announce the winner. Yeah, don't worry. We won't forget. We'll get you guys. When we're giving away free stuff, we like to give you free stuff. We'll make sure you get your free stuff. Yeah. Promise. We also like to make it hard for Tate to work out who the winners are. <laughs> Correct. Because <and the> <laughs> that makes if sense. If you guys haven't noticed, my goal is to make Tate's job as hard as possible. Yeah. Also vote for the next one. Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> Two against one is seemingly more unfair than I thought it was going to be. You made those odds. <laughs> Um, so just some other things that went live today and we wanted to call them out, uh, even though we've talked about them and we probably won't go into the details, but right. the Odessa Proving Grounds is a new war zone that went live today and I think we actually left this out of the patch notes originally, but we wanted to make sure that for the first few days this is live, this will be the only war zone that pops. Correct. So right now our plan is to leave that like that until Thursday morning. Um, we'll probably Why, that was a brilliant time, idea! That, so that all the war zones pop, but sure. if you're really excited to play this new war zone, the Odessa Proving Grounds... What's well, also another good idea is to allow people to choose the arena or war zone that they want to actually participate in. Within, uh, I, I think, reason. It might need to be tweaked a little bit, but... Seriously! I mean, I talked about this earlier. In, in the video about the PP, PvP love and stuff like that. But in all reality, I mean, seriously, more people would probably play PvP if they had the ability to choose the PvP that they prefer and play it. I mean, uh, I think Hutball... Oh, no, I think Hutball is a good idea. I think it's a novel concept. I think Hutball is an asset to the game. I freaking hate Hutball. I do don't play PvP as much simply because I have no desire to play a hotball arena. So until I can get to the point where I can choose to play PvP without having to worry about hotball popping, I am certainly not going to play PvP any more than uh, I am right now, which is pretty much nil at this point. But seriously, I mean, come on. What, what did we say last episode? Options and stuff like that for people to play the game in a more enjoyable manner? Options. Give us options to play the war zones that we like the best. And then you can use some metrics to determine, hey, people like this war zone. Why? Let's figure out why. Let's make more of that. You know? Come on. Think. Necessarily like in force a rule set of you having to RP there. So what we felt was more important was making sure that we can build tool sets for our peers. Things like being able to 
make your own chat channels and work within those chat channels and things like that. So know that it's very important to us that our peers have the tools they need to role play, but we didn't feel that actually separating an instance type just for it was necessarily the right solution. So right. you're not at all forgotten. We definitely want to make sure that our peers are right, accounted let's get for back in those to changes that, that we made. So yep. just pull back here. things like being able to make your own chat channels and are important, right? As a star how you want in any of the servers. Yeah, and so one of the questions full PvP update coming along with this chapter. Well, we also started Season 7, which yeah. I didn't put down here. Um, but so We squeezed that in, by the way. I know a lot of people are like, you didn't announce that ahead of time. Be like, sometimes surprises are good. Yeah, we, <laughs> you know, we had talked about it on the live streams. We'd been debating back and forth the, the best way to do that. And at the end of the day, we said, there's a new war zone coming out. There's a new arena coming out. We absolutely have to start Season 7. So we made sure we got that in for all of you guys as part of a, a bigger kind of cool PvP update coming along with this chapter. Um, so make sure you guys get in there, Good, play some ranked it. war zones, play some unranked war zones, um, and check out the new content. That's right. Also, I, I did just see, by the way, Tate linked into chat the straw poll, and it also stickies at the top of chat. So if you missed the straw poll link from before, you can click it and still vote. Cool. Uh, and the last thing, you know, those quality of life improvements. A lot of great stuff for guilds, strongholds, you know, uh, player character names, as well as the instance types of having now PvE or PvP instances, yep. not being restricted to any particular server. You yep. can play how you want in any of the servers. Yeah, and so one of the questions, uh, I don't know if it actually come up in chat, but I had seen people asking it, ahead of us talking about the stream was specifically for instances and RP because we hadn't put an RP yeah, instance right. type. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that because that's something we talked a lot Please about do. internally. The shortest version I can give you is RPing is super important, right? As a Star Wars game, people being able to immerse themselves in that world is very, very important. But having an instance or a server type dedicated to that doesn't necessarily like enforce a rule set of you having to RP there. So what we felt was more important was making sure that we can build tool sets for our peers, things like being able to make your own chat channels and work within those chat channels and things like that. So know that it's very important to us that our peers have the tools they need to role play, but we didn't feel that actually separating an instance type just for it was necessarily the right solution. So you're not at all forgotten. We definitely want to make sure that our peers are accounted for in those changes that we made. I think that's a reasonable explanation, and we just have to so wait to see what they can offer up rewards. in so terms as you guys of know, the tool set. If you were subscribed um, by April 1st, uh, you got the oh HK yeah yeah the more set, more this HK the garbage the more the HK garbage yeah 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 but again I mean talking about options options for our peers and stuff like that you know again you know I'm gonna keep harping on this because I think it's an important point obviously so and it's my show my video so I can harp on whatever the hell I want. But again, we're talking about options, like I just mentioned. Options to be able to play certain PvP stuff and to not play certain PvP stuff that you absolutely detest. Again, along the lines with, with, with RP, you know, how about the options not to have to be forcibly rushed through the best part of the game, which enhances the RP of the game? You know, the le the 1 to 50 experiences that I mentioned before. You know, very. I'm not a big RPer, but I like to be immersed in the game. And thus far, the enhanced XP as well as the level sync completely destroys that immersion I get from the game or had from the game for that leveling experience. So how about options to turn the garbage off and play in the vanilla mode? I don't want the better rewards. The rewards are meaningless to me don't give me any rewards i don't freaking care i just want to play the uh, flash points the end of the leveling game as i was before 4.0 dropped and of course uh, in terms of that i want to at least be able to pick up the equipment and the looks of the stuff that was available before then sort of like the esley's gear the black talon gear the hammer station gear Give us the friggin' option to do so. I mean, come on, seriously. It's not goddamn rocket science. I mean, stop limiting the game. Stop rushing people through the best part of the game. Give us a chance to play it in the manner we want. If somebody wants to rush through it, good. You know, give them the option to be able to turn that stuff on and rush through it as fast as they friggin' want. I don't want to rush through it. End of story. Every year, so we gotta stick, gotta stick with that tradition. Um, and we're going to do a bunch of stuff that wraps around this and all the details of, of this um, 
uh, promotion will come out in the next couple of weeks. But some things we're definitely going to do. We're going to bring back double XP, which we haven't done in a long time. Uh, oh, so for those great. Shit, just what we need. Even status, more increased double so XP. Far, Jesus go back Christ. And all those characters you're missing, you know, the, the class stories you haven't played yet. Uh, we'll do a bunch Obviously, of I'm prizes. sure we're not going to be able to turn that off. That. We have some cool ideas we'd like to give out. Um, we're not quite sure what it's going to be, um, but as soon as we have that information confirmed, uh, we'll make sure we communicate it out to the world. Correct. And then you should probably talk about this last yeah, one. Yeah, so uh, we were talking about different things we could do for May the 4th, and I don't know that this is necessarily going to happen on May the 4th, but it will happen in May, and we're going to have more details on exactly what's going to happen. But basically, at some point, probably early in the morning, I'm going to sit down at this desk and start playing Fallen Empire. And I am not going to leave that chair for the day until we have played, I've played through all of Fallen Empire that has launched by that point. So that'll Which take all of what, two uh, hours? 13 chapters. So I'm gonna play 13 chapters, and of course, we'll make it okay, fun. Okay, two and a half, guests. three hours. We'll give away some stuff throughout the time, so if you guys wanna watch me have fun, it'll be simultaneously awesome because I'm playing Hot Feet, and also, it's a long time to sit at the desk <laughs> and play at one time. Yeah, so no, not that So will be tired and just delusional, and it'll be really fun, so. Because if yeah. you're, you know, talking to the stream, answering questions, right. doing giveaways, I mean, it could take you 20, 20 hours, hours exactly. at least <laughs> no. exactly. to get no. through this. No. So, it's good. so it'll be fun. It'll be, it'll be a good time. I'm looking forward to it. It'll be a good way for you guys to come, hang out, see all of Fallen Empire if you haven't played it before or you have and you just want to watch me help me decide whether to kill or let people live or however <laughs> that ends up happening. Um, so it'll be, it'll be a marathon stream of me <laughs> playing all of Fallen Empire. Uh, so. There was a question in there of how long will double XP last for? Right now, we're looking at around about a week, um, but we haven't finalized the dates for the whole promotion. So right. as soon as we have that, we'll, we'll send it out to everyone. But I think it will start a little bit before May the 4th and then run through to May the 4th and potentially through to May the 5th. Yeah. But we'll, we'll give you guys that information as soon as we have Yeah, that. even like giveaways and prizes. Like we'll have a lot more details on all this stuff. Obviously, May the 4th is a big deal for Star Wars, so we're going to have a lot of fun with it as well. So we'll make sure to get you guys all this information um, as we get closer to May. Yeah. All right, next slide. Right, so an update on the Eternal Championship. So first of all, we never talked about the date outside of the fact that we had to move it. <laughs> Correct. Right. Correct. Uh, but now that it's been on PTS, we've got some feedback. You know, we're really confident in launching this with Chapter 13, which will be mm, four weeks from Testing. Um, so that's really it exciting. Um, you know, going to PTS really validated that we're in a pretty good place outside from some small tweaks and adjustments we need to make. Which um, is completely which is cool. fine. Uh, I kind of jumped ahead a little bit. I think, Charles, do you want to just remind everyone what the Eternal Championship is all about? Yeah, so this is basically just a brutal gladiatorial fight on the lower levels of uh, Zakul's capital city. Uh, it's all about going up against the craziest, deadliest gladiators from the whole galaxy. You know, ridiculously overpowered characters going up against you one-on-one, -on -one, or sometimes three or four against one if, uh, if they feel like cheating, <laughs> uh, which is encouraged, as always. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, everyone vying for the title of Eternal Champion. Uh, another really cool aspect of this chapter is it ties into the Alliance uh, recruitment mission that'll be going out alongside it, which is Bodar, the Wookiee gladiator uh, who people might remember from the Smuggler storyline. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, no real surprise there that he might get involved in this. Uh, he's been, you know, taking a going down undercover in a way. Like he's working on Zakul, he kind of owns a little bar. Uh, so he's kind of pretending to be just a regular up and up citizen, but really he's trying to. Uh, Help out the fighters in the in the uh, Eternal Championship. See if he can't smuggle them out. Help them the way that the smuggler helped him uh, get out of that life. But cool. of course, there's no way to get out without getting in, and that's going to mean the player and Bodar <laughs> going to have to do a little bit of Eternal Championing themselves. It's very cool. So there, there's a pretty cool reference for some of the original Old Republic fans. Absolutely. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, though. I mean, the whole kind of setup is very uh, reminiscent and and meant as an homage to uh, Knights of the Old Republic, to that uh, gladiator uh, arena on uh, Terrace, uh, where players, you know, took on the role of the mysterious stranger and uh, and fought an uh, arrangement of ridiculous people uh, <laughs> to to earn their uh, their title. Uh, this is very much inspired by that, and uh, and I think it's a really fun throwback, and you know even even zanier in many ways. I think it's going to be a ton of fun when players get in there. Absolutely. So one of the questions that we got that we're not going to answer yet, but I want to bring it up is the question <laughs> of, well, that explains Eternal Championship, but what companions am I going to get in Chapter Thirteen? Ah. Hold, hold on, we'll get there in a second. <laughs> in one second, I promise. You and you'll and I think you'll be excited because yeah. there's some fan favorites coming back. Yeah. Um, so PTS itself, yeah, so uh, one again, like Ben said earlier, we had some problems getting PTS up, which again was, was actually a good thing because ultimately yeah. that's the goal of the test server, right, is, oh, this didn't work and it broke when we threw it against the wall, great, that's, let's get it fixed before <clears throat> players actually 
actually get their hands on it. Um, but since we put <laughs> it up, we've gotten a lot of testing and a lot There's of feedback. There's I literally read every single you. feedback post that people had put up on PTS. I sent these guys a wall of feedback that came <laughs> through. And one of the things that we saw, and I don't know how much specific we want to get, but people want to see more from the rewards that come from, from Eternal Championship. That's definitely one of the big pieces of feedback that we have. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to talk at all about that. Yeah, we're, we're actually just we're doing some brainstorming this morning of some extra things we could add to the vendors so that, you know, if you want to play the Eternal Championship on an ongoing basis, you can use the tokens you earn from them to right. buy more stuff beyond the gear sets and stuff that's available. So um, we're trying to finalize those plans and I don't want to necessarily give the specifics of it, but the goal is to add some decorations to a bunch of the bosses oh, um, just at a minimum. More and then above and beyond that, we're looking at adding some additional things um, and we're just trying to uh, clarify the things we think make sense to add to those vendors and don't make sense. So hopefully there's a little bit more uh, in there to keep you guys going. You know, the whole hey, idea of just always, achievements. You can always go along the concept class, of, you know, you using this as title. an alternative you know, you to get every some top-rated gear. I mean, and, you know, beyond that, we want to make sure you know, just have eternal championship specific looks, on, you know, just like we have operation specific looks. I mean, give players more opportunities to get high-rated top-rated gear. Just know that it's extremely welcomed. Please keep the feedback coming. Uh, our plan is we'll probably put up another update to PTS sometime this week, um, so you'll see some of those changes reflected. And then um, Eternal Championship will be on PTS likely for one more week, maybe a little bit more, with maybe one more update coming after that. So, um, again, keep giving us feedback, keep hammering your faces against it and telling us your feedback, because it really does help immensely. So thank you for everyone that's helped us test uh, EC on a... Uh, I keep saying EC, and people are like, Explosive Conflict? <laughs> Don't know how Eternal Championship. Yeah, Eternal okay. Championship. Um, so the next thing we have actually, well, you talk about it because yeah. it's a fan-made video. Yeah, so uh, again, one of the things that you know Ben really said that we should try to do in these, in these live streams, which I thought was a great idea, is to highlight some of the great work that happens in our community. So we were looking around for some of the videos that people have made about Eternal Championship, and someone who's been around for a long time, especially on YouTube, is Valk. Um, he made a cool video that basically just shows the first cutscene yeah. as you get introduced to the Eternal Championship and, uh, and learn a little bit about it from the person who runs it. The person who created it? He, he's sort of. He, he would say that he created, designed, sure. managed, and everything it. Right. But, uh, you know, maybe take that with a grain of salt. Fair <laughs> enough. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and skip to Volk's video real quick. It's about a minute, minute and 20 seconds. Let you go through that uh, that cutscene, and then we'll be back for a few more things, and then we'll, uh, we'll wrap this up. So we're going to skip to that video. We'll be back in a minute. Wonderful, another one. In answer to your most likely questions, no, I do not sell seats, no, I do not grant autographs, and no, I absolutely will not make a wager with you. How could anyone know about mayhem at the Arena Grand and not its architect? Ah, and so we have also an example of the subpar dialogue option tree. The greatest source of entertainment in all the Eternal Empire. You're awfully eager to die, stranger, unless, unless you truly believe you have the infinite endurance and light speed reflexes to make it in the arena. Only the most fascinating, frightening, and devastating combatants and creatures from all across the galaxy, a who's who of deadly mayhem, all the way up to the eternal champion. Okay, I get it. You're in. What we need now is a name. A name that tells a story. Something to get the crowd excited about you. I've got it. You're an unknown. A nameless wanderer from a faraway place. You will be the mysterious stranger. Wonderful. Then we're in agreement. Fight time's almost here. You're slated to go up against the master of killers. If you need to say goodbye to anyone, make it quick and get on in there. That's the spirit! I need this to look like a real fight, so try to stay alive a little while. Alright, and we are back. <laughs> <We're> <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing because I saw a 
thing in chat that said we want a Moscow inspired droid customization. What would that look like? Wouldn't that just be like an Arkin and Tyson droid? I guess so. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) Or it would be like it would just be like a a droid with gray hair and a soul patch. But I don't know how that would just look odd. I don't know. So a whole blur video video inspired by Moscow wasn't enough. Yeah, I guess. guess Anyway, so thank you Volk for making the video. I know Volk has a bunch of other guides and stuff posted on his YouTube channel. We'll link to his channel in the wrap up on the forum. So thank you Volk. And again. Anyone who makes content, all of you guys who have blogs, podcasts, videos, streamers, please keep this stuff coming. We're going to keep continuing to try to highlight you guys in the future. So um, you're all awesome. Keep it coming. I think people are excited that Vets coming back, but I can't. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting the impression. <laughs> I'm getting that vibe. I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, do you want to? Yeah, let's dive it? right in. So uh, the next chapter coming out, Chapter 13, Profit and Plunder. That's coming May the 3rd, just in time for May the 4th. That's for early access. Mm-hmm. Uh, Correct. So this is going to be a whole like heist mission. You're joining up with Galt and Vet, you know, going on this this you know secret clandestine heist to uh, la- raid the plunder that the Eternal Empire has taken from the entire galaxy. This is your chance to, you know, get the kinds of funds and, and resources that the Alliance needs to fight the Eternal Empire in a serious way, and while you know landing a blow against them in the right in the process. So it's a great you know kind of two in one mission. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Obviously, it's Vet and Galt who are both hilarious characters who are a ton of fun. So it's it's definitely a more humorous chapter, uh, and it's gonna be all about just working alongside them uh, and and stealing a whole ton of cash. Uh, also, we're gonna get uh, for those of you who have played Chapter Twelve, you know that some of your characters were left in a precarious position, <laughs> which I will not go into any detail on. Uh, this will also be your chance to uncover what happened there and uh, make some potentially fatal decisions. Yeah, it's one of the, the I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things that we see sometimes is, really, where does my choice matter? Show me. There's there's yeah. points that happen where you have to realize that your decisions you've made over time at a certain point come to a head and the end of 13 is definitely one of those situations. Yeah. Uh, we made shall choice see. already that you won't realize has a big impact in chapter 13. And I look forward to hearing what you think when you get there. Uh, so excited. Yeah, I just I love this uh, this art that they put together for it too. It just really captures kind of the the fun, heisty excitement of an adventure raiding the vault of the Eternal Empire. <laughs> it's just really cool. These are such fun characters. Very yep. excited. And we're gonna yeah. see some of them at the end. We have a really cool cinematic that yep. kind of shows off what Charles mm-hmm. is talking about. Mm-hmm. It's mainly got Galt as the main yeah. person in that yeah. cinematic and he's very interesting. Yeah, my own personal but I think this is the most fun chapter we've made. Yeah, absolutely. It is, so much fun to play through. It's <laughs> yeah. just out of control. Yeah. All right. So let's wrap it up. Let's do it. So do we want to hit this before we go any further? Oh, please do. Okay, so Tate came in while we were playing the video and delivered to us a pink slip, which I'm not going to show you the other side because I don't want to announce things at a time. Do you, I feel like you should do the honors okay. based on this information. So this is the results of our straw poll. So officially. Officially. As of 4.20 p.m. Central Time Correct. in the U.S. Um, we found out the result of the ultimate controversy, I think, between which mount <laughs> is the, the greatest, the Nexu true. Cat or the Acle. Um, and, you know, there's not much of a surprise uh, if I'm man. honest about it, but the Acle <laughs> mount took out uh, as the front runner with 68% of all votes versus 32%. You guys messed up. You need to understand, you can't make Ben right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> not, that's, that's a dangerous precedent. That's not a thing you want to do. <laughs> it really wasn't a good idea. <laughs> um, so that's really exciting. And we have a winner who uh, uh, Tate will be in contact with who will receive the new Acclay mount that is only just available as of right sure. now. Sure. Uh, and the winner, if you can believe it, their name is Dinosaurs. That's right. <laughs> Which I feel just makes the winning that much better. Yes. That their name is Dinosaurs. So, uh, Dinosaurs, if you're out there, Tate will be in touch with you from the official SWOTOR account. If you don't hear from us in like an hour, send us a private message to our Twitch account. We'll get your account information and we'll get you your, your accolade. Are we also going to do, are we throw yeah. in? Well, I was going to, I was just showing Musco my phone. So Dan Bunton, who's our producer for Cartel Marker, texted me and he was like, you're not right. The <laughs> Nexu mount is actually one of my favorite mounts. So why don't we give a Nexu one out for free? as well so um i don't know how we want to do that it's kind of last minute can we just do chat like if you type in nexu right now you're in the winning to run it and tate has to work it out sure is that that sounds great (laughs) listen make it it work for tate thing too yeah all right okay there should be some honor system there like if you're 
Let's wrap this up, shall we? Bang. That's right. All right. So let's get through the wrap up. So, Thank you. You know, the big thing to talk about, obviously, four weeks from now, Profit and Plunder is coming out. Early access is on May 3rd. Full access is on May 5th. Um, it includes the Eternal Championship, which is a really exciting thing that, that allows people to test their skills against some of the deadliest uh, opponents in Zakul history. Yep. Uh, we have the Bodar Recruitment Mission, the May the 4th promotion, yep. which we have a lot more information to share with all of you, and we'll be doing that shortly. When it gets closer, yep. And then, of course, forum wrap-up, as always. Um, the stream's only 30 minutes, which we're at one minute over, but that's fine. So we'll post a wrap-up of everything we talked about. Any questions you guys have about anything else that we didn't cover, please throw in the forum wrap-up, and I'll spend the next few days kind of going through the thread, answering any questions that I can. Um, spam next to you there if you want, or, or that's fine. Um, <laughs> so uh, feel free to go back into the wrap-up. Again, if you missed anything, if you came in late, we'll tell you everything that was covered there. We'll link to Vault's, um, things like Vault's YouTube channel, etc. Um, but yeah, so we'll post yeah. the rest of the questions there. And now cool. we're going to leave you with one small part of one of the cinematics from the next chapter. Correct. Um, no need. I, do you want to set it up at all, or is it? Uh, it's just, we you just know, we're, we're get, getting ready for the heist, putting together a few uh, small items that we might need uh, <laughs> small to carry essentials. it out. And uh, yeah, it's, it's no spoilers for chapter 12. Uh, just uh, watch it and enjoy. Yeah, cool. And All right. with that, I think we'll sign off. So yeah. thank you very thank much you for joining in yeah, once really again. And we'll it, see you next month. Yep. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to hide our faces and then I'll switch to the video. So give me three seconds and you'll be watching a video. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Bye bye now. You got our money? About that. I was really thinking we should renegotiate the price, you know, seeing as I don't need the whole missile. Yeah, I thought you might feel that way. Last sequence initiated. Okay. Well, I guess that wraps it up for us, too. So I'll just say right here and there. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I hope this was fun and informative as always. And until next time, I will see you in game. I will see you in the forums. This is Dolph Oblivious saying TTFN. <laughs>